In this video, we're going to look at the Enhancements panel and specifically the Autumn Effect, Dodge and Burn and Enhancements sections. Now the first option we see is Autumn Effect and we have four different options, each one doing a slightly different thing. So if we choose the first Autumn Effect, we'll see a dialog appear here and we choose our pixels and we can decide how strong we want the Autumn Effect and when it's ready we press OK. The next Orton effect uses a slightly different process and at the same time comes out with slightly different results depending on the scene that you work with. And you have to find out which one suits you. If I just bring the opacity down again in the same box, I can decide the strength of the Orton effect. And if you see that it's too overexposed in the highlights, we can apply our changes only to our shadows so that it doesn't affect our highlights. We have to have a mask selected to do this and we choose apply to shadows and when you hover your mouse over this button you'll see that it says gentle mask and that's exactly what we're creating a gentle mask that keeps the autumn effect but protects our shadows so you can see we now end up with a nice dreamy magical feel and the next autumn effect option is autumn effect warm and we're going to create a nice warm dreamy feel in our image again i'll bring the pixels down and press ok and now our image has a nice warm glow. And again, we can choose apply to shadows and we'll protect our highlights while still applying that nice magical glow to our image. And finally, we have Orton Effect Cold. And this does the opposite of the last one. Instead, it creates a nice cold feel to our images. And it's up to you which one you choose to use, but each Orton Effect will complement a scene very differently. And after playing with the buttons, you'll get an intuitive sense of which one works best with which scenes. Now we have two dodge and burn functions. If we just press DB1, you'll see we have a soft light grey layer. All we need to do is choose our paintbrush and let's say we'll choose a white paintbrush. By doing that, we can enhance our highlights. If we feel that's a bit too strong, we can bring our opacity all the way down and we can have a gentler dodge and burn effect. If, however, we want to darken our shadows, we can just change the foreground to black and you'll see we're darkening our shadows. Now, the next Dodge and Burn tool works slightly differently. If we just press DB2, you'll see we have two layers, Burn and Dodge. If we click on Burn, choose a white paintbrush and make it bigger and make the opacity 100%, we can see we're darkening the shadows in our image. Alternatively, Still with the white paintbrush, if we choose Dodge, we can brighten the highlights in our image. Now we also have two detail enhancing options. The first one, DB Details, we simply click on that and we choose the strength of the detail enhancer. And so for example, I'm going to choose 9.4 here and I choose the mask. And to add the detail enhancer, all we do is zoom into the area we wish to apply it, choose our white paintbrush and paint in the details. And so this is a before and after. The second detail enhancer will instead create details across the entire image. Now let's look at the second detail enhancer. Again, this uses different Photoshop processes to enhance details differently. And all we need to do is leave the sliders as they are and press OK. And now when the detail enhancer is finished, we can just lower the opacity. And you can see it's very strong and that's adding a nice general detail to our image. If, however, you want to be selective with your detail enhancements, we can just create a mask. And with a black paintbrush, we can just mask out any areas we don't want to enhance detail. On the next part of our enhancements panel, we'll see enhancements. And to start, we have autumn. And this essentially will create autumn colors for any green foliage that we have. And if you find, when you press the Autumn button, there are still some greens and yellows that haven't changed color. We can open up this layer, go to Greens 2, and if we just slide this along here, that will widen the range of colors that we're affecting with this layer. The next button is called Glow Curves. And if we just click on that, we'll see we've created a new layer with a black mask. And if we just choose a white paintbrush, make it nice and large, and just paint in our image, we're essentially adding a nice glow to our image. And the reason why we do this is because we might want to add more emphasis on a particular part of the image. And with this tool, we're basically adding a spotlight. 
and we're guiding our viewers eyes so before this our image is kind of flat there are a lot of things going on but we need to give our viewers a particular area to concentrate on adding this extra layer has done exactly that and by default it has created a soft vignette around our image the next button is called glow free and I'm just going to bring the opacity of glow free up this will allow us to create a soft glow around our highlights we can do that again with a white paintbrush making our brush a little bit smaller and just painting in some of the highlights like that and there's the before and after so it adds a nice dreamy effect to our highlights next we have contrast this will create a soft contrast boost in our image while protecting our highlights so if we open up the curves layer you can see in the histogram that none of the highlights are going to be affected in this curves adjustment and so we can change it to suit our needs and there's the before and after next if we find our shadows are becoming too dark we can just click on shadows and essentially we'll create a contrast adjustment that protects our shadows next we have highlights and this will just give our highlights a little contrast boost but be careful that it doesn't overexpose your image now the next section apply to highlights apply to shadows is exactly what it sounds like if we create an adjustment and add a mask to that adjustment we can make sure that the changes are only applied to the highlights in our image and we do that by pressing one which is a gentle mask or two which is more specific to our highlights or three which is even more specific to our highlights if we want to apply those changes to our shadows only we can do that by pressing one and again we can create a stronger shadow mask by pressing two and be even more specific by choosing three 